Wright is a visionary, counselor, best-selling author, and dynamic leader. As pastor of the gathering at Forestville, his progressive leadership, commitment to the kingdom, and his dual profession as psychologist and full-time clergyman make him one of the most frequently sought after pastors globally, impacting not only the surrounding community, but the nation and abroad. Bishop Wright holds three doctorates in theology, ministry, and psychology, and has been strategically called to help Christians discover, resolve, and release the hidden pain that inhibits spiritual growth, divine worship, and the fulfillment of purpose through the glory and power of God. Bishop Wright serves as presiding prelate and spiritual covering to the gathering of churches and ministries, a fellowship of churches and ministries that stretches across the United States. Bishop Wright is married to the lovely Dr. Nakia Wright, and they, along with their children and granddaughter, reside in Bowie, Maryland. Please receive the ministry gift of Bishop Donald Anthony Wright. I bless him when I'm praying for somebody else's healing. I bless him when the doctors say you have cancer. Bless God at all times. Not when it's convenient. When you're converted. This praise will continue to be in my mouth. I honor the Lord um, just for grace being here. I'm sure that those of you that are watching are like, who is this guy right here? We don't know him. You know you want to say like the book of Acts. Paul, I know. <laughs> Jesus, and who is he? I feel a lot like John the Baptist, except for I'm on this side of the Jordan. I just feel like a voice crying in the wilderness, and I thank God real quickly. Um, I, I know time is, is precious. Things are different, and be, be, because of our anxiousness, we get bored quickly, so I won't bore you with a lot of church idioms, but I won't go a step further without honoring Bishop Talbert. And we thank God for, for you, sir. We thank God for your yes to God. Yeses don't come easy. Because after you say it, then you have to walk it. And then the Lord doesn't tell you that you have to walk it for 30 or 40 or 50 years. You have to walk it when folks walk with you. You do. Moses, you have to walk it when you got a few million people behind you. Then you have to walk it when you go up on the mountain alone with God. You have to walk it when you can pray and quail come from every direction. Then you pray and manna falls on everybody's steps. And then you have to walk it when they want to stone you and say, we want to go back to Egypt. We miss our onions. We miss our leek. We, we like having garlic breath, so we don't want no more manna. You have to walk it when you <laughs> hear me, I don't even know why I'm saying this. You have to walk it when you make a poor people rich. Israel came out there. We'll look at that in a minute. Then you have to walk it when you come off the mountain and Jethro comes and said, your wife and your children be with us. Nobody told you that your family would leave you. Moses' family had went back home. That's the part we don't preach. Jethro said, your wife and your children, they'd be with me now. And so I thank God for your yes. Until you've walked. <laughs> I thought I knew about life until I saw my firstborn, my daughter being born. And I had a total new respect of you in the room and you view things for yourself. And so... You know, preaching. My wife and I was laughing here. I was teasing her. And and Lady Talbot, bless you. And I don't say that lightly in passing. The Lord bless you. Um, it's my first time here, so y'all give me a second. I'm enjoying the atmosphere. The praise team's good. 
I came from the hood, so I still steal. So if you miss these cats right here, I'm telling you where they'll be. <laughs> I steal. I just want you to know, I'm telling you now, God forgives. That's amen. So open confession, good for the soul. <laughs> and, and so, and while we're giving honor, can we thank um, Lady Florida Moore here? Can we, can we do that? Can, can, can we do that? A amen. But thank God. Somebody, some, somebody went before you and made a way for you. Don't get it twisted that everything is easy. So I, I got so much to unpack for you and, and so little time to do it in. And, and, and I don't know, you know, there's only a few of us in here. I don't know why y'all standing. If I was you, I'd be sitting down. <laughs> I would. I, I would. Um. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm so sincere when I say thank God for your yes. And in the middle of these times, the, the church, all, all of our responsibilities still go on. And we have to, we have to, we have to be sensitive um, to the needs of the church because our yes is still our yes and it's still our witness. And we don't want the world to think that when trouble comes, the church fails too. We, we don't fail. We don't fail. We don't fail. And I've got so many. I'm, I'm really just taking a second to get acclimated to where God's got you spiritually. And accepting my place in the body of Christ. And how, how long I've been in this walk, Bishop. And, and how how much I've studied and how much I've seen and how much I've learned the hard way. It's always my heartbeat to help those not learn it like I learned it. Um, call it what you want. Call it mentoring. Call it fathering. Call it caring. Call it love. Call it Christ-like. Call it common sense. I, I don't know. I just want to help you not be it. I'm just trying to discern whether the Lord wants me to talk about what I had what I had planned to talk about or talk about some current events um, oh I'm not talking about presidential speeches when I, when I say current events I'm talking current in the kingdom of God and the spirit of God what's really going on with the hand of God with the presence of God and, and I've been talking about that in our local assembly how in 2 second, second Samuel how when David tried to bring the ark up the Bible talks so clearly that the ark turned aside and I really was talking to a good friend of mine Mark Sharona and he was telling me when I mentioned it to him he said everything in his body just shook he said you have to write the book that's not a word to the body of Christ it's a word to the globe right now the ark is turned aside in America the west coast is on fire the southern part of the nation is underwater two storms at the same time the east coast is blinded with racism and we're asking for things that you shouldn't have to ask anybody to do um, when I come home from the 7-eleven would you please don't kill me America is in trouble and the, 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 the crazy thing is that the, that those who should have seen it didn't warn us which means they didn't see it and when when David tried to bring the Ark of the Covenant up into Zion the Bible said that because Uzzah basically was of the old school and they was worshiping up on Gibeon because there was two locations of worship in Jerusalem there was Gibeon where the whole tabernacle of Moses was without the Ark of the Covenant so everything was going on without the glory of God they had the water they had the brazen altar the water labor the candlesticks I got my eye on the clock they had the candlesticks and and they had the table of showbread and they had the golden altar uh, but they didn't have any glory and the priests were performing their duties without the glory of God and the absence of the glory of God became normal and so when David tried to bring the ark up they put it on the way that sinners brought it up they put it on a new cart sinners the Philistines after God smote them with emeralds and he, and he sent the ark back up and he God brought himself back to his people because the Philistines couldn't handle where the glory of God and the Ark of the Covenant and God didn't want to be there so they put it on a new cart to get rid of all of their hemorrhoids and they sent God back and when they tried to bring the Ark up into Zion they did it the way sinners did it and so the church then mm -hmm, 
they, they, they started behaving like sinners to bring their people in and Uzzah tried to hold God on a cart where God didn't want to be held and he didn't want you to bring him in like sinners he wants us to bring him in like he said bring him in I'm the Lord God and I change not and when David tried to bring him in he brought him in the wrong way and the Bible says that the ark turned aside that they that, that they had to put the ark of the And I was talking to Mark and I said, and, and Mark called me. He said, Mark, he said, Brother Wright, listen, man, Don. He said, there's about to be a, a, just, just a summit between evangelicals and Anglicans and Pentecostals. He said, and we just want to sit down and talk to see where we are. And I said, Mark, it's so simple. The ark has turned aside. The miracles that America used to see in the church are gone. When is the last time you've seen the blind eye open? When's the last time? Someone came to church and stopped before they went to the hospital and said, can you pray for me? There's no confidence in our power. And we have a form of godliness. And the ark has turned aside. And God is quiet. And folks don't want to talk like it's real. And that's not something I'm going to talk about today. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Get your Bibles. Let's have some fun. Not sure if everybody want to hear my truth. I live in a place right now where God won't let me ignore his obvious absence. Go with me, if you don't mind, to Genesis 26. I just want to share something with you that I've been sharing with my my congregation and if you guys are not sensitive musicians are y'all real 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 sensitive to the spirit of the lord i want you to do something for me the young man on the organ he's so cool listen he's gonna be in the back of my car i'm promising you he is so cool i don't know whose son he is but just look me up and just call and you can get him but i need you not to play for a second and i need you on the piano just to play me something soft just shift this for a second I don't want to be obvious, church. Just play me something soft. Just I don't like empty chords. I need a structured song. Our worship needs to be structured. Yeah, that sounds better. And all of a sudden, your heart's changed from obvious. to acknowledging our need for more of him. I don't, I don't want music signals. I want the glory of God. And there's nothing wrong with these guys. Don't miss it. But every instrument has a different function. It, it does. I got about 25 more minutes. Don't worry. just a little bit and go with me to Genesis 26 let's have some fun yeah. Yeah. the merciful God in the name of your holy son Christ Jesus we say thank you for all grace that you have already made abound to us I thank you for this house. I thank you for this pastor and this family and and, and, and all the circle of believers and everybody that's online. And, huh, and God, while some people are hearting me up, I pray that you heart them up. Let them sense your glory right there in their homes. Oh, God, let them sense your glory right there in their houses. And we come against sickness. And we come against disease. I come against cancer, I come against high blood pressure, I come against lupus, I come against everything that's got a name. Because God has given his son a name 
above every name so if you can name it glaucoma i name it healed in jesus if you name it a brain tumor i name it healed in jesus there's a name above every name and his name is jesus and so lord we speak the name of jesus over every over every house listening now and i thank you for it and i thank you for it and i thank you for it and I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Genesis 26. Let's have some fun now. Boy, but for a few, if I thought y'all would come out, I would do revivals. Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, old school. Ain't nobody would come to nothing like that. An online revival. Nobody wouldn't watch that. <laughs> go to verse number one in Genesis 26 let's have some fun now I only got 22 minutes how do you do this because I want to go from Genesis 26 to Exodus 12 to John 14 to Daniel 1 to Matthew 8 to Matthew um, to Acts 28 to John 14 and that would be the beginning but let's just look at this verse number one thank you brother and there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was, that was in the days of Abraham and Isaac went unto Abimelech. Mm, how much of this do I have time for? Hold that thought. Just hold that thought. Go to Daniel chapter 1. I'm trying to give you as much as I can. And... This is introduced. Did you okay? Stick your finger back in Abraham. I mean Daniel one. Go go back to Genesis. I could I could do it this way. I could do it this way. We're just doing some teaching. Is that okay? Why would I try to come and preach behind your pastor and this worship team? I know I just look silly, but I'm not crazy. This introduced it this way. Verse number twelve in Genesis twenty six. Let's do this this way. Then Isaac sowed in that land. Verse 1 said there was a famine. Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And, 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 and I don't want to, 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 to preach this or teach this from, from a, a point of view of financial gain and prosperity. But the subject right here lessons during COVID, the subject is living by a different set of rules. Let that settle in your spirit. Living by a different set of rules. Clearly, here in the text, Isaac was in a land that was some, somewhat hostile to him. Isaac was also in a land that was barren. The Bible said there was a famine, not in his house or in his finances. There was a, fi a famine in the land but Isaac's relationship with God dictates now that I don't live by the hardships other people go through hmm. their worship doesn't affect my worship their faith doesn't affect my faith I live by a different set of rules you are waiting for me to get to the good part. I'm done. You just witnessed a president that throws the Constitution out the window and lives by a different set of rules. Judge him all you want, but he was bold enough to try it. We had the blood of Jesus and God's word, and we stay silent. We trust the doctor before the pastor. The pastor will preach by his stripes. We are healed. And we go, I sure hope so. You're living by an old set of rules. When the famine came, Isaac looked at the land. He looked at his need and said, you know what? What you all go through, don't bother me. 
I don't live by your set of rules. I live, mando shit. I live by the rules that a great God has spoken over me, so I'm going to trust him. And while there was no rain, while the earth was dusty, Isaac goes out and says, come on, service, come on, man, we can make go sow. Isaac, we're going to sow? Yeah, we're sowing. Isaac, ain't nothing happening. You can't see it. Something is happening. And I'm clear. See, the change is not in your money. The change is not in where you sow. The change is not in whether your pastor is rich or poor or the worship team got new instruments. The change is in your mind. Isaac knew in himself, if I do what God said, I don't care what it looks like. I live clearly. By, go, go to Daniel. Go to Daniel. I clearly live by a different set of of rules i don't care that pepsi is not hiring i don't care that i don't have an mba i already got a job that i didn't qualify for god already put me in a, i already listen y'all ain't hearing me i already bought a house when my credit score was only 610 and the bank said i don't know why i'm doing this for you i already live by a different set of rules can you hear what i'm trying to say to you i said this to my church and they went cuckoo they listen i told the church bishop i told them i got history with God I've seen God bring me out I've had the doctors say I had cancer three different times and they said we're going you need to come in for treatment I said I'm getting ready to go get some give me an appointment in 30 days and I went on a fast and went back and told him check me again I got history with God I live by a different set of rules so don't think that the pandemic locks me up it just gave me time to get closer to my wife. I live by a different set of rules. I'm not that guy that's broke down and beat up. I don't know if you all can hear me. I'm not preaching to your emotions. I'm preaching to your spirit, man, today. I need your spirit to catch this, that I am not that guy. The world don't attack me. I live someplace else. I live in the kingdom of God. Okay, Daniel, 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 Daniel. Daniel. Daniel, Daniel, get this. Daniel chapter 1. Go to, go to Daniel. Let's go. Let's go. And if I get out this Bible, please save my soul and sit me down. Daniel chapter 1. Let's have some fun. What am I talking about? Living by a different set of rules. Daniel chapter 1. Look at this. Verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoh Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand. Say what? The king of the southern kingdom, Judah, and God gave his worshipers and praisers away to a heathen because they failed to worship? You mean people who used to worship with you can fall, fall astray and look like they're blessed? And have the trappings of success for six or eight months? And God will give them away? I didn't say, wait, wait, wait. Would somebody help me with this real, real quick? Oh, Lord, I've got 12 minutes. Help me with this real quick that there was no devil in this verse. The church is so quick. You know, the devil is coming. The Satan will fight you. God, if one more person preach on the devil more than God, I'm just going to get up and go and watch the Al Pacino movie Scarface or something. I don't know. The devil, the devil, the devil. There is no devil when they got their worship wrong. God gave them over to heathens. And the ark turned aside. Okay, let's keep going. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand. The Lord did it. And part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, small g. And he brought the vessels unto the treasure house of God. I'm old school. I'm reading King James. If you have another translation, that's good. Verse 3. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs. Follow this carefully. Here we go. The king, Nebuchadnezzar, spoke to the head of the eunuchs that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children of whom was no blemish. Wow. But well favored, skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge and understanding science, 
such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning of the tongue of the Chaldeans. Oh, we're going to take you. We're going to we're going to semi-promote you. We'll let you stand in the king's palace, but we're going to change your speech. We're going to take away your good morning and your good evening and your yes, ma'am, and your no, sir. We're going to let you speak hip-hop and a whole lot of other things. We'll even pay you, give you great money when you wear skimpy and, and clad clothing hmm. and have tattoos in places that mama say need to be covered up. We'll, and we'll pay you a success when you call your women out of their names and we'll make you famous because you're a hip-hop artist and all the clubs gonna want you and they'll drink Cristal and some other stuff because you have changed the language. We're gonna teach you our language. Who was this, worshipers? We're gonna teach you the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed unto them daily provisions of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank. And this ain't going so good, but y'all hold on. He gave them meat and wine. So nourishing them for three years. Man, I wish they had time to talk about three years. That at the end thereof, they might stand before the king. Let me prepare you. I'm going to do this now to prepare you to come back full circle so I can reap what I've, I've sown into your world. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. No long are we, David and Michael. We now Puki and Ray Ray. Okay. Okay. But Daniel purposed in his heart. Ah, oh God, living by a different set of rules. That he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs, that he might not defile himself. When I got here, Bishop, I promise you, you could hear. I, we was online and I could hear the saints take a deep breath. Because he was answering to the prince of the eunuchs. A man with, without the ability to dream anymore. His dreams were slayed because he was now, therefore, my God, the servant to all of the king's wives. Therefore, when the king's not present, he didn't want any misgivings to happen in his quarters. Therefore, in order to be promoted, you had to be castrated. In order to go higher, you've got to now serve somebody where your dreams are gone. You only live for somebody else's dreams. Furthermore, I submit to you to tell me if I'm in error. A man who cannot have family is now only, now only, now only relegated to one way of life. And we don't want to use the word homosexual in the church. But now who do you think the eunuchs have become? Okay. Because they're only, they're, they're not dead men. They just cannot find any satisfaction in this particular arena, which opens up another door. And okay, okay here we go. God, I'm not sure. If, I'm, this might be too, wife, this too much on the first day. God, this is a, I might not come back here, Lord Jesus. But there's a gas station on the corner. I'm going to be gone quick. And so the eunuchs were the ones responsible, the folks with no vision for their own life are now leading God's people who had vision but wouldn't worship. Okay, because in order to throw away what God's got for you, saints, something has to be strong enough to distract you. But Daniel purposed where? In his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion. Now God had brought Daniel into favor. Even with that, he brought him into favor and tender. I didn't judge homosexuality. Because we have a lot of brothers and sisters um, that I love that are wrestling with their flesh. Just like a whole lot of married folks is half crazy too. So listen, deliverance is deliverance is deliverance. And so, you, no, 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 no. I have some folk that have some challenges that I love and they love me. I got some family members that I love and they treat me better than some of the deacons. Don't get that twisted, okay? No, 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 no. I didn't come for nobody. I don't want y'all to think that. I just want to read the text. 
so that we can, we, we, we can broaden our horizon to accept how God wants to bless anybody. And the church has been real. Let's go to verse number nine. Now, God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Look at that. Maybe you missed, you, maybe you missed the first two verses. Now, God mm -hmm, brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the princes of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king. Daniel, you said you ain't going to eat this meat, man. I'm, I'm in trouble. Who hath appointed your meat and your drink? For why should he see your faces worse likened than the children which are of your sort? Then shall you make me endangered, my head to the king. Daniel, you don't eat, man. You're going to start losing weight. You're going to look like you're fasting. Dude, and then the king going to want to know, what, what, ain't you doing your job? Why, why these, I conquered them. Why are they looking bad and sorrowful? What's going on with you, Daniel? If you don't eat, if you don't give what the kingdom has provided for you, what, let me, let me rephrase that. If you don't partake of what this kingdom has provided for you, you're going to start looking bad. Then said Daniel to Milzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, prove thy servants. I beseech you, I beg you, give me 10 days. And let them give us pulse. Here's my diet. And give me water. I don't want your wine. Then let our countenances be looked upon before you. And the countenances of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. Man. And as thou seest, deal with thy servant. Give me ten days. And then judge how I look. If you give me ten days to live in my kingdom. And not enter into your kingdom. Then come back after 10 days and see me and see how I look serving the God of promise. Even in Babylon, I could be blessed because I live by a different set of rules. Okay, God, are y'all hearing what I'm trying to say? Ooh, Lord, I thank you. And at the end of 10 days, verse 15, uh -huh, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh. Then all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzah took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. How did Daniel succeed? Because he lives by a different set of rules. He knew who he was. He forbid anybody to feed him what his covenant didn't accept. You know what? You can be fed and it don't have to be at the dinner table. He forbid Facebook to give him something that God didn't want. He didn't let Twitter speak into him what God didn't want. He lived by a different set of rules. Saints, I'm not talking just about holiness and unholiness. I'm talking about the kingdom of light opposing the kingdom of darkness and why the saints feeling so agitated. I don't know what you're upset about. Most of you gaining weight during COVID. You, you gaining weight doing this. You, you, you need to go on a fast so you can lose some of this, okay? Because we live by a different set of rules. We do not panic. Trump can't make me stay up at night. In the beginning, he could. And then I read Daniel. The most high rules in the kingdoms of men. He sets up who he will, and he takes down when he gets ready. Many people, our brothers and sisters, have developed a stronger prayer life now that this has gone on. You don't want to know what really happened so far? What's really happened is the reason that we're antsy is because we're at home alone with ourselves. And we got nowhere to go. I, I don't go in this room much. I go in here and pray. I can't pray in there. That's that's the room where I, I, I slip and drink in it. Because if I go in that room, I have memories of my history. So I can't find God in there. Oh, God's in there, but you got issues up here. It, it's, your, it's your memory. that you. See, I would go down the basement. Oh, that's why I was talking to my brother. My brother, man, my brother in Boston, he crazy. May tell me all kind of jokes down in the basement. I, so now you can't. And now the Lord is doing something interesting. 
He's sanctifying what he gave us. Now you're home. Now you got to watch us right here in a place, yeah, that should have remained pure. And now the Lord is sanctifying it. And that's good. It's not bad. Because the other set of rules that we live by, or the set of rules, not other, is that God is first. And we've made God conveniently second. I'll get to it when I get to it. Now, we, now we're learning how to pray before we go to sleep. That deserves a pause. We used to just go to bed and jump up and get up in the morning and jump up. Now, now it's required prayer for deliverance. And at the end of 10 days, they were fatter, they were healthier. Oh, this is the big part. And they didn't lose their witness. The people who knew they were saved still knows they're saved. They still know that they are victorious. Okay, uh, 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 are y'all still with me? Are we having any fun just yet? Okay, go to Ezekiel real quick. Just go to Ezekiel. And I, I, I'm going to try to do this as a close. Because we ain't having no fun. Pastor, if you give me back, I promise I'll preach better. How about, let's just go Matthew chapter 8. We could do this and find, a, find our way out. Matthew chapter 8. Your pastor's, pastor's a very gracious man. He keeps saying, you're doing good right now. Go to Matthew chapter 8. Let's just see if this makes any sense. Everybody got it? Amen. Y'all got it at home? You got Matthew chapter 8? Go ahead, heart me up. I'm not going nowhere till you heart me up. I'm not saying nothing. Heart me up. Where the Jeopardy tune? <laughs> I got five hearts. I need five more. Okay, that's good. Okay, Matthew chapter 8, they better now. <laughs> chapter 8, verse 5. Watch this. When Jesus, was, what are we talking about? Living by a different set of rules, which means you're not going to be broke another day. It's not a gospel of prosperity. It's a gospel of the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, if I with the finger of God cast out devils, then the entire kingdom, everything that God got is right here at your disposal. And he told you, pray, thy kingdom come see most saints trying to get raptured out lord take me to the kingdom god's trying to get the kingdom to you thy kingdom come i don't bother me with the rapture thing saints because boy you don't want to hear what i'm going to tell you about that because if we was going to be talking about that we'd be way out in deep water on that bishop i'm trying to tell you because some some of us in the, in the 80s try to say listen the numbers don't match See, when you did with Schofield and Clarence Larkin and all them guys that tell you about, my Lord, the tribulation period and six days and, and a thousand years and, oh, Lord. Okay, so if you really want to do the math, do the math because math never lies. Even though sometimes the pulpit do, the math don't lie. A thousand years in the sight of the Lord is... They know it. God, I love you. I'm in the right house one day. And one day is as a thousand years. So 4,000 years from Adam unto Christ. Okay. And 2,000 years from Christ unto now. Then you got a thousand year millennial reign. Okay. So 4,000 years from Adam to Christ. Then you had 2,000 years from Christ to now. That's the end of the sixth day. Then you begin the seventh day at the year 2000. However, there's something in there for seven days called the tribulation period which is three and a half years of peace they taught and three and a half years of war so if you're going to believe in that and then the millennial reign begins on the seventh day okay and that's the 1000 years then the rapture should have took place by 1993 at the worst 1996 it's 2020 and we're still trying to figure this out the math doesn't lie false hopes do and I, 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 listen, I told my church, I'm one of the few people on the earth who knows when Jesus is coming. I got the revelation. 
That brother that played the bass just looked at me like, this preacher is a little strange. I ain't scared of you, man. I got three bass guitars, you understand? I can't play none of them. I bought them so I could learn. So now they're just sitting there on this stand. They look good, though. If you walked in the house, you'd think I got this, right? I, but I said what I said. I'm one of the few people that know when Jesus is coming back. Do you want to know? When he gets ready. <laughs> and until then, we are supposed to occupy till he, but not trail. We're supposed to be the head and not the tail. We are to be above, not beneath. We are to lend and go to Matthew chapter 8. And let's do this and close out, okay? Matthew chapter 8, verse number 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, you're trying to make me preach. Don't act like I can't preach. I can preach this thing about it. I used to preach at E flat, but now I'm a teacher. But that's all right. Let me hear E flat. Just let me hear it. Mm, that sound right, God. I love you, son. You, kid, get that boy. We're taking him home. When Jesus <laughs> was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a, a centurion living by a different set of rules. A Roman soldier, a Greek, somebody that wasn't the Jew. Mm, none old shaman, they said. And said unto him, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy. One of my faithful servants is paralyzed. And he's tormented. Jesus said unto him, not a problem, brother. Let's go. I'll come. I, I, I'll come. He says, I'll, I'll come and heal him. He didn't say, I'll, no, he didn't say, I'll come pray for him. He said, I'll come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, wait, 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 wait. He a Roman. How he get to call him Lord? Why didn't he say rabbi? He said, Lord, God. Bishop, can we go to lunch and just have something that we can talk about this because I don't have time to do this. He said, Lord, I'm not, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my no and my servants shall be healed for I am a man. Listen, I understand living by a different set of rules. I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say unto this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed. He turned around and said to the Jews, he said, I, 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 wow, I've not found so great a faith. No, not in Israel, but my people don't believe like this stranger believe wow the man said i know authority my kingdom obeys me clearly you work someplace else you live by a different set of rules and the centurion said speak the word and whatever forces that are subject unto your power they will do it in a place where i don't understand it oh saints are y'all hearing me and the Bible said, and I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out in the outer darkness. The children of the kingdom shall be cast out huh, in the outer darkness. The, wait, the, king, the saints are supposed to know? Not going to stay with God? Did he say that? And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, go, go, go on, man. Go on, go that way. And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the same hour because Jesus lived by a different set of rules. And if I had time, I'd take you to the scripture that he said that the works that I do, sis, greater than these shall you do because I go to my father. Well, I think I misquoted the text. He said the works that I do shall you do also. So you'll speak. And somebody at Washington Hospital Center will just get up. <laughs> you just, they'll just get up. And then he said, Bishop, and greater than this shall you do. Because I go to the Father. Because you now live with me and I'm in him and we are one. And we live by a different set of rules. So church family, hear the word of the Lord to you. While there may be a pandemic, while there may be some corruption in some high places of government, while there may be some challenges on your job, you live 
by a different set of rules. And if you only apply what God has given you, I promise you that he's the Lord God. My God, are you hearing? Whew. He cannot lie. We live in another kingdom. But we allow the six o'clock news to bring us drama. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up and let the king of glory come in. The word of the Lord today is very sobering because we're living in difficult times. And, and, and why didn't you preach, Bishop Right, I didn't preach because preaching has spoiled us. Because we preach what you want to hear rather than teach what you need to know. And while I may not have got many fans, I've given you rules to life that you'll lay hands for real, for real on the sick. And they shall, when the church doors open back up, you'll lay hands on the sick. And when pastor is up here on his knees, my God, the deacons will be running up, pulling his coat. And say, he'll be like, what are you doing? Don't you see me praying? No, 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 brother James, brother James. No, on, 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 on all his son. You know, brother James? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got up out the wheelchair in the parking lot. The Bible said he was supposed to enter the gates with thanksgiving so we pray the saints can pray the power of relief into the kingdom when I walked in the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said this is one of the places I've chosen many are the called only few are the chosen Everybody is not of the chosen. And the Lord spoke to me and said to tell you that you are not in rebellion because you've heard different. And there is no sin in different. Okay? You're not rebellious. I heard God say, don't fight with him. Relax in his choices for you. Just find peace men won't understand you just find peace because I see your nails and your fingers raw that's how I saw it oh shit that's how I saw you because you were a man in prison climbing the rocks trying to get out and your fingers were raw and you were saying does anybody see where I am can anybody help me understand the mysteries of God I am not mad with anybody or anything that went before, but, but I need to press. It's oppressing me now toward the mark. The mark of prize of high call is not a blessing. It's not a house. The mark is Christ. I press towards him. And I say like Paul said, brother, and I, I count not myself to have apprehended. I'm not there yet. I'm not telling nobody that I'm perfect. But one thing I will do, forget those things which are behind me both my failures and my successes I won't keep dwelling on yesterday yesterday will never provide you vision it only provides you history there is no vision in yesterday yesterday is only a reminder you need anointing to go higher and I saw your fingers roll because you were tired your legs was getting tired and the Lord's going to send you a rope and pull you up now to the place where he showed you I don't even know what I'm talking about I've never laid eyes on you that I can remember until an hour ago and wife you've been doing real good encouraging I'm trying to keep them encouraged now be a bulldozer get behind him no, 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 no. I don't say that in the sense of being subservient. Get behind him and push him and make him never settle for less than the greatness he's called. Get in his face. Make him angry till he knock his eggs off the table in the morning. You say, that's all right, baby. I'm going to cook you some more eggs, but you're great. And don't settle for no man, no woman, no building, no car, no shoes. Press toward the mark of the cross. Don't let him settle. Get on his nerves. Make him come out of my house. I'm a bishop. I had to come see you. My wife getting on my nerves. And I'm just going to look at him and say, yeah, she's telling you how great you are again, aren't you? There's higher heights for you.
time is up. The ark has turned aside. Gibeon, the mountain where ministry is going on and no glory. Or Zion, not Jerusalem. Zion, we get that confused. God is trying to save Jerusalem. No, 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 no. He's building on Zion. I'm too full. I got to stop. I'm out of time. I love you. Support this man. Support this man. If I hear one more saint talk about how imperfect leadership is. You know what God gets? You want to know what God finds for the pastors? Can I tell you where he finds them? In the pew. He finds them with you. And you could be great if you support greatness. God loved him so much that he died for him. I'll never criticize him because Jesus had a crush on you, man, so much till it took him to the cross. <laughs> yeah. And so I never put my mouth on nobody, but I'm extremely careful not to criticize ministry. If I can't get along with you, I love you, and I pray for you. Then I go have lunch with my wife. If we don't get along, it's okay. It's okay. But you... There's more for you. You ready for the bad news? The bad news is that's why you've been feeling stagnant. Because when God showed you more, you didn't step out. Here we go. That's not a rebuke, saints. That's an observation. <laughs> you know how I know? Because you look like somebody. Me. I know what it looks like to be overly committed to the point where I abort his voice for the purpose of loyalty. And greatness is written all on you. Everything that you touch is going to prosper. I wish that I was saying something new, but I'm only saying what you've already heard. Everything you touch is going to prosper. You haven't even seen success yet because you live by a different. Don't eat the king's meat. Stay with your part and your water and watch you'll appear fat when they see you again. God, oh, say. Somebody just lift your hands. Let's worship for a second. of healing a place of restoration a place where men men feel like I can grow here a place where women feel like I have purpose a place where the children feel like I'm not overlooked for the, a grown gospel Jesus said suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom. Suffer to come here. Come on, saints, even you online. We live by a different set of rules. I won't be evicted from my house. I won't see a tow truck in my driveway snatching my car. I'll be the head and never the tail. I'm above only, not beneath. I live by a different set of rules. right online maybe there's someone that's not saved maybe you've never confessed Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior I don't believe that you have to be in the sanctuary I believe God can do this virtually if that's you if you've never confessed Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior we want to take a moment and just talk to you 
and minister to, to you because I believe just as Bishop so eloquently declared on this morning we don't know the actual date that he's going to come back but we do know he's coming when he gets ready and in saying that I know we we want to be ready for that time amen so if that's you Bible says all you have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God raised his son Jesus from the dead if that's you if you believe that and can make that declaration amen I just believe all you have to do is say I'm saved I'm saved I'm, I'm saved I understand that doing this virtually may be a little challenging so we have leaders online that's waiting for you and they want to minister to you amen if that's you amen just drop a comment right there in the comment section and say pastor's talking to me and I promise you amen we want to share some good news with you amen concerning a Jesus that we've fallen in love with amen. and for that we celebration now listen can y'all do me a favor? Hey, y'all, I am so full right now. Can you just do me a favor? Drop some hearts. Drop some love. Amen. For Bishop Donald Wright. Amen. We live by a different set of rules, y'all. <laughs> We've been living beneath our means. But we live by a different set of rules. And hey, y'all, I promise you, if we would have get, if he had more time, he would have blown us away. We're going to have to bring him back and just let him be free and not bound by a clock. Amen. Listen, it's time for our offering. Tithe and offer. Get your tithe. Get your offering. Amen. You should see the instructions online. Amen. At each campus, whether you're giving in Fordsville, whether you're giving in Fort Washington, whatever campus you're giving at. Amen. We've tried to simplify the process for you and, and you have responded and we're so grateful for that. Amen. Um, um, there are while you're getting your seeds ready I just want to make sure we we need some multimedia support amen at our um, at both campuses amen if you are interested amen please send Selena an inbox if you would likewise um, Lisa Wiley is leading up our our COVID response and such that uh, doing contact tracing coming back into the church and she may need some support if you want to be a part of that team um, please send uh, Lisa um, 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 Selena in inbox as well and we'll connect you with the right people listen just because amen, we're, we're worshiping virtually does not mean that there are not things that need to be done in the church we need you so if you need if you want to participate and want to volunteer please drop us a comment amen let's pray father we thank you for this seed I pray that you will return it some 10 some 20 some 100 fold return bless the giver on this morning oh God and I pray, God, and we declare in your word that you said if we would give, you would give it back to us with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, and you will cause men to give unto our bosom. And we trust and believe that to be so. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we love you. All God's people said amen. 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 Listen, our time has expired. Amen. We're going home. Amen. We will see you on Tuesday night for Bible study amen via zoom and we can't wait to see you the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you the lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace hence now and forevermore all god's people said amen amen hey listen drop some love drop some heart say i love you in jesus name <laughs>